What's up? Today I'd love to share with you a funny way to win in just 7 moves, even against master level opponents. I'm Grandmaster Igor Spirnov and let's go ahead and get started. So, the funny version that I'm about to share with you is happening in the Scotch Gambit here after you play pawn d4. Black accepts this pawn and after that you play this strange looking move 9g5. And the funny thing about this variation is that I shared it in one of my older videos briefly just as a quick joke, but then so many people started to message me saying that it works like crazy and they managed to crush much higher rated opponents. And then I looked uh, at it myself, you know, and analyzed it a little further and realized that indeed there are a number of really, really nasty variations here that Black should be aware of and most of your opponents certainly aren't. Now, what's gonna happen here? After you play your knight to g5, your intent here is that you target this pawn on f7. And if black does nothing, then you're gonna play bishop c4, and also your bishop will support this attack, and you will eventually capture that pawn and win. Therefore, black usually plays pawn h6, and the vast majority of your pawns will play this move. After that, you sacrifice your knight on f7, drawing the king out to this exposed position on f7, and now you play bishop c4, delivering check to the king and start attacking it. And guess what? In this position, according to statistics, most players play king to e8, which is crazy, because after queen goes here to h5, it's checkmate in 5 moves. Kinda similar to the scholar's checkmate, but the funny part of it is that it works against even expert level players. I checked the database once again, and I think that especially for the players below 2200, or it works extremely well for players below 2000. So if you're in that rating range, then definitely this opening may work for you. So what's the trick here? Well, you attack the king, so the only move for black would be here, and now queen comes here to f7, and it's easy to see that black is nearly checkmated. Now after king comes here to d6, you can play bishop f4 check, but even stronger, the quicker, is to play pawn e5, and this is checkmate in just a few moves. <laughs> That's insane. Um, for example, if they capture it with the knight, then queen comes here to d5, check, king is on is forced, queen takes here, checkmate. Let's try a couple of other options for black, they wouldn't help either. Let's say if black captures here with a king, then obviously you would win here with many different ways. Uh, queen f4 wins, but the way that I love the most is to play in bishop f4, check, king has to go forward and now pawn f3, because you can't resist the temptation to deliver checkmate by a pawn that is just always nice. Now if black tries, let's try the final attempt of black to run away to the queen side, then you just play queen d5 and the and the hunt is really quick here, it's still checkmate. So that's how you win the game within just a couple moves in the most played opening line of all. And at first it may seem like some just sudden trap and your pawns will easily uh, get away from it, but let's look at statistics. So here we're going to the Leeches database and let's see what happens here in reality. Knight c6 still, we're going over the most played moves, we're playing pawn d4, and here in the right corner you can see the statistics of games played, and the first line is the most played move. So here pawn takes, and instead of all the usual moves of the scotch gambit, knight d4, bishop c4, pawn c3, instead of all that, uh, you play the move knight to g5. And now, as you can see over here, the vast majority of players play pawn h6, and the vast majority of them lose, <laughs> which is nice. They also play bishop e7, we're gonna look at this in a moment. They also play knight f6, which is also pretty bad, because if they go there, knight f6, then you just play bishop c4, and now black is actually in trouble, because that pawn f7 is under the attack. I'll link another video of mine where uh, I'm sharing with you how you can win in, in that line. So knight f6 doesn't help, bishop e7 we're gonna analyze, but the most played move is pawn h6, and if they do so, you just happily grab the pawn, king recaptures, bishop to c4, check to the king, and just look at this, the vast majority, the overwhelming majority of players play king e8, which results into checkmating 5 moves. So that is just really funny, and that just goes to show you how powerful this opening variation is. By the way, I don't even know how to call it. Like, the Leeches database just tells us that this is a scotch game, but so it doesn't really know the title of this variation. Therefore, if you have any suggestions, write them down in the comments below. I don't think there is a title of this gambit. If it exists, you know, let me know. But if it doesn't, you're welcome to suggest your name for this new gambit. So knight takes f7, how would you call this? Let me know in the comments below so that we get some title for this opening variation. All right, now let's analyze the second possible variation here. We just analyzed that king going to e8 loses. It is just a force in checkmate in five moves. What if king comes here to e7 instead? 
In that case, you just get this long-term compensation. You can't check Mady right away, but because the king is so exposed and so awkwardly placed, it actually locks out the other pieces of black as well. You just keep attacking this king. So I suggest the move pawn to c3. Or you may also castle, both moves are perfectly fine. So again, you're not trying to checkmate it right away, you just, or you're looking for some long-term attack against this king. You want to finalize your development and attack it. And the c3 move serves this purpose. You want to open up more files, develop your pieces, and continue attacking. Now, if black doesn't capture there themselves, then, well, guess what? You're going to win this pawn on d4, have a strong center, and you will keep attacking black's king. And if they take here on c3, then you recapture with the knight, now there is a strong threat of knight to d5 check, therefore black pretty much always plays knight f6. And then you actually play knight to d5 anyway, and even though theoretically black can defend here, in real games black almost always loses the game, because again, finding the right defense is extremely difficult here for black. And what they do in real games is they capture here on d5, they recapture, creating this once again threat of queen to f7 checkmate, the only way for black to cover that square would be queen e8, but that loses to another banned bishop g5. Check to the king, and there is no hope for black now. After pawn takes, queen takes, we just begin attacking the king, and this is the final attack, because after king going here to d6, you can almost checkmate black by castling queenside, which is extremely beautiful as well. Now check by the rook, and it's gonna be checkmating, I think, in two moves here. So another really unexpected and really beautiful line that allows you to win quickly and in a fascinating fashion. And at this point, let me also address the elephant in the room, because somebody will certainly write in comments that it's all nonsense, because if you just turn on the engine, it will show you that black is winning here easily. Okay, black is winning according to Stockfish, but what is the winning variation? Can you find it yourself? Just give it a try so that you can understand how hard it is the task of your opponent. Uh, let me just show you the variation suggested by Stockfish. So what is the refutation of this attack? It's not king e8, not king e7. So it's pawn d5, giving up the pawn here. And after bishop takes, the king bravely moves forward to g6. What? Black just sacrifice the pawn, moves their king forward. These are certainly not the moves that your opponents will play, unless they are prepared. And certainly most of them will not, because it's an obscure opening line that no one is aware of. If I think it doesn't even contain any title. Right? We don't know even the title of this gambit because it's so rare. So again, like these kind of moves, you know, pawn d5 and then king g6, this is Magnus Carlsen level moves, and your opponents will definitely not find them. So yeah, still, of course, like don't get me wrong. This is a risky opening to play, and theoretically your opponent can find the refutation, and if you bet your house on this game, then don't play this opening, but I think that in a casual blitz game, it will work, you know, 9 times out of 10, it will work like crazy. Alright, let me also show you another also interesting and practical variation here. What if your opponent decides, okay, I'm not gonna play pawn h6, let me attack this knight by developing my bishop so that I develop a piece and also attack the knight. Guess what we're gonna do here? We're gonna sack it anyway crazy. King takes, bishop c4, so far everything is pretty standard, and once again most of your opponents will try to bring the king back to safety and they'll play a kind of wrong move king to e8. Again, if they don't, well then you just have this long-term compensation because your opponent's king is exposed, weak and can't castle anymore. But usually they'll play king e8. And after that there is another funny line, you still play queen h5, the move doesn't seem to make sense, it seems like it just hopes for black to play king f8, allowing you to checkmate it like that, but black player thinks to himself or herself, hey, I'm just playing pawn g6 and it's over. But all of a sudden you play queen d5, and it turns out that it's almost impossible for black to stop a very straightforward checkmate and threat queen to f7. And even though, again, theoretically Blake can defend this position, if you're playing against Stockfish or Magnus Carlsen, they will defend, but if you're playing against meta models, you know what, usually, I've ch checked in the database, they either play knight h6, which certainly loses because you can just grab it with your bishop, that doesn't help at all, or they play another losing move knight e5, just trying to delay the inevitable loss, because in this case you'll still grab the knight and you have a completely winning position right here as well, you're attacking the rook and the king is still exposed and you can pick up that pawn in the future as well, so it's just completely winning. So that's how you win games with this simple yet unknown opening gambit that we are yet to come up with a title for.
You may wish to check out this video about the Scotch Gambit, which is a more solid and classical way of playing this opening variation without crazy sacrifices or wrong moves, and you can play it against any opponents, it's a solid way to play. Also, if you want to know how to develop this kind of an attacking style of playing, you may click over there and attend my free masterclass so that you don't have to rely on memorizing opening moves that I'm sharing with you, but you know how to find proper moves yourself. Wishing you a great rest of the day. Ciao.